I'm Hannah welcome back to my channel mostly paper crafts in today's video I'm going to share with you some card inspiration using the August 2021 my monthly hero kit from hero arts I had a lot of fun playing with this it did take me a couple of weeks to finish I well this is one of those videos that I started and then yeah I finished like two weeks later so I did end up making 10 cards, technically 11, and then a bookmark, but I think I have some creative ways of using the kit, hopefully some stuff that will inspire you to create some cards of your own. We'll start by taking a look at the stamps and the dies. So we have two hands that come together to make the little hearts, and L-O-V-E for love there as well, and for our clear stamps we have a bunch of sentiments and these are going to be great for a variety of cards thank you for being you you color my world you're vibrant i love you all colors are beautiful you color me happy your light shines through you're the best strength lies in differences and then of course sending and then we've got love here as one of our fancy dies there's a nice color blending or color swatch chart on the back because in addition to those stamps and dies, we also got some watercolors. These are liquid watercolors, and we can blend these to create all of these colors and more. And then we also got a lot of good stuff in this kit. This is a big rubber cling stamp, and the idea behind this stamp is that you can um, kind of make a color wheel with this where your colors are overlapping and uh, that's really pretty neat. We've got this stencil and some watercolor paper. So there's a few sheets of this included in the kit as well. I did get a couple of add-ons this month. So I got the Stamp and Cut XL to get a couple more hands. We get Hug, which is in about the same font as love. So I'm trying to think of some words I might wanna put on cards that use the letters H-U-G-L-O-V and E. And then these sentiments are in the same font as this main kit. So a bunch more things I can put on my cards and I can of course mix and match those with the main kit. I did also order the paper grab bag. I think this was six or seven dollars. And so there's a ton of paper in here. I'll show you that real quick. And then it said that there would be a special gift. And for me, at least, it was this cute little stamp set with the fairy and the mouse and some dandelions. Some cute sentiments too. I think this is a great value. If they still have this next month, I'll definitely order another one. So cute little stamp set. I got a couple of translucent envelopes and some fancy, this almost feels like handmade paper. It's like more of a fabric. And then check out all of this cool paper. These ones in the front are actually just flipped over. We've got the mirror and then this nice silver or uh, sorry, copper glitter paper. And uh, if you have watched many of my videos, you know how hard it is for me to use up my special papers that come in the kit. So I'm really excited to get just a bunch at once because that makes it easier for me to part with it when I know there's a bunch more. One more thing I wanted to show you, these were not add-ons for this month, but if you saw my last video, I've been playing around with the Hero Arts Lifestyle Paper Doll Collection, and these were the two sets that I didn't have, and after I had so much fun playing with the other ones, I knew I wanted to order these, and while I had the free shipping anyway, I figured that was the right time for it. I'll definitely be playing with these lifestyle sets soon, but for now, I've got my hands full with all of these goodies and I'm gonna make some cards. When I started my cards, I was in a very lazy mood and I didn't even feel like painting. So mostly I was just wetting the papers and then letting the watercolor do whatever it wanted. Um, this one is splatters, uh, but this, 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 these are just taking 
the watercolor and smooshing it around and adding more water and turning it and letting it drip. This one I wet a lot first and then I let it drip this way. And then this one actually, this page was so wet, I just took another sheet of paper and I pressed it on top and pulled off some of the color. So that's how I got that one. It's been well over a week since I created those watercolor papers, but it's just been so busy. <laughs> I need to take a breath. But I really wanted to get to crafting, and you know, I've ordered some other new stuff since then that I really want to have time to play with. So I was like, okay, I gotta get these cards done. And I really did enjoy playing with this new kit. So we've got a love shaker here. This is one of those watercolor panels that I did. And my favorite part about this is that I had die cut out love from another piece of paper and then I fussy cut around to create this little border. It looked kind of plain before I did that so I was really happy with what that looked like and if you're having a hard time picturing what I'm talking about I had it cut out and then I just fussy cut around to get that nice little trim. Now for my shaker bits I used these sparkles, which are from last month's kit or the, the month before, I don't really remember. And then I'd use these little clay hearts that I got on Amazon a while ago, totally forgetting about these awesome shaker bits that were in one of the summer's kits, the one with the kitties and puppies and in the birthday. And these would have been so perfect. Look how perfect that would have been. But it was too late. For my shaker, I did use excess packaging. So if you look closely in there, you can see all the layers. There's no foam tape in this. It's just a bunch of packaging layered and glued together to create my well. I haven't decided if I like it better like this or this, but I suppose whoever I give this card to will get to decide. I think this love die was my favorite part of this kit and after I created this one, I had the idea to repeat love four times and I've just inlaid the three loves here with the same paper. The sparkly white is from Hero Arts. It was in that grab bag that I got. And then of course this is cut out of a red glitter and then layered over on top to give it just a little bit of dimension. It's pretty simple, but I thought it turned out great. And then of course a white panel inside since you can't write very well on a black card base. Continuing on with those watercolor panels I started with. This one is a very bright and vibrant card. So we've got You Color My World. This is heat embossed. And this globe is from the December 2019 kit. I knew I had a world somewhere. So I cut that out. I layered it up on a few circle die cuts and I did cover the globe with glossy accents. I put a ton on there and then let it dry overnight. I was pretty pleased with how that turned out. The glossy accents um, that I have had sealed shut because I hadn't used it in a while so I know I need to keep that out and keep using it regularly. But I like the bright green card base and this of course is a custom size. I love making cards whatever size they feel like they need to be and not being restricted to just four and a quarter by five and a half or five by seven or whatever. This next card is one that I had in my head from the first time that I saw the kit. I knew I wanted to make a slider where the hands would come together to make the heart. So it only took me a minute to try to figure out how the pieces should lay together to do this. Um, so I'm gonna show you my dummy here. I love paper engineering and figuring out how to uh, make pop-ups and all sorts of things and that is definitely one of my passions. So here's my dummy so that you can see exactly what I did. And of course this doesn't line up perfectly in the colors, you know, it's just a dummy. But um, I figured out how long I would need to make my slot and then for my mechanism to hold the hand here, it's actually just a tiny little rectangle of paper that's glued to this back strip and that pops through to the front. It's not fancy at all. Actually, maybe you can see it through the light there a little bit. Yeah, that's it. It's just a little rectangle of paper that goes through the slit and then glues to this back piece. I also needed a 
sleeve, I think that's the right word for it, to hold my slider piece. And uh, you can see I didn't make it long enough the first time. That's okay, that's what makes it a dummy. But that sleeve holds it in place so that it doesn't wiggle back and forth, and that's really all you need. It's a pretty simple mechanism, and then I was pretty pleased with how this turned out. I just kept it simple with the coloring with craft since I already had that nice background there. I did use a stamp from Lawn Fawn pool here that's from their interactive stamp set. I don't remember the name of it right now, but I wanted to make the border match the hands too, so that's cut out of a stitched rectangle border die from Lawn Fun. And it doesn't quite get all the way there, but what I wanted was to hide this channel, which you can see in the dummy here. So um, I was restricted a little bit with how far I could make it move. And the other thing that I wanted was for the hands to line up with the border when it was closed. So it doesn't quite make it all the way, but almost. I had one more big panel that I had watercolored on and I ended up cutting it in half and making two smaller cards here. These again are custom size, which I think is just fine. And these sentiments are heat embossed. And then I actually took the heart from the set and just used the clear Versamark with clear embossing powder just to give it a little something there. I like the way that it looks over the watercolored background because it does make it a little bit more saturated. Um, I feel like maybe it could use a little bit more, but for now, I think this turned out just fine. Last night when I was working on cards again, I was watercoloring for um, another card that I'll show you in a moment. And I had some extra paint left over in my palette and I had a piece of scrap paper over on the side and I ended up just doing a rainbow wash and I thought it turned out really pretty and then I was cutting it down with my die and I missed <laughs> and it, the die had moved in my machine and it cut off a corner and then I had to keep trimming it down and so I lost some of what I originally liked about it but I thought this still turned out really cute I just put it on a thin pink border and then on a nice light turquoise card base the sentiment of course is heat embossed so looking at these previous few cards, you can see originally the watercolor panels were four and a quarter by five and a half. So I had some strips, some scraps left over and I created another card with it. So the love here, that's the um, letters that were cut out from my shaker. And then this of course, is from the other side of this panel <laughs> and then we've got strips just from the other ones when I was cutting them down and I thought those came together really nicely too so sending love this is on a another turquoise card base all right for my next card I wanted to use this stencil but I don't have any pixie spray right now and I was worried about it moving around because it's pretty delicate. So what I decided to do instead was I taped it down to my, my uh, panel and then I used Distress Resist Spray and I put it in my splatter box and I sprayed like that and then I ink blended over the top of it. So this was a white panel then the stencil, then the Distress Resist spray, and then um, I added my sentiment on vellum. It is heat embossed. And then the vellum wraps around, the adhesive is on the back of that panel, and then the whole panel is adhered to the card base. So I liked the sentiment with the bright colors here. I think it does kind of look like sun rays. So your light shines through on a very interesting uh, interestingly textured card front here. This big rubber cling stamp was really fun to use. I stamped it a couple of times uh, and it messed up a couple of times, but on one of my stampings, this is on the watercolor paper that was included in the kit too. I took my colors and I mixed them up in a palette and then I just colored one circle using each of the shades that I made and I let the colors overlay each other and create the different shades. So I did 
um, eight different colors in my palette, overlaid them, and this is what I came up with. I really didn't want to do anything more complicated than that. When I stamped this originally, I did it in Jellyfish ink from Lawn Fawn, which is a no-line coloring, but I didn't like that there was no definition in between them, so I did go back with a white gel pen just to sort of help you see the pattern a little bit better. And I really liked the way that turned out. I cut it out around the edges and put it onto a black card base. And then of course we need a white panel to write on inside. For my last card, I used that same stamp, but this time I colored um, half of the spaces pink and I made it darker toward the middle and lighter toward the outside. For my sentiment, I tried to get creative with this and cut it so that the edges matched the stamp there. Not something I would usually do. Normally I would keep it straight and rectangular, probably in a corner, but I wanted to do something just a little bit different. And then this heart here is from a punch and I just punch it out a bunch of times. The top is water colored and then the other layers are black. And that punch is from Martha Stewart, I use this punch a lot. So that's all my cards. I did also make a bookmark. These bookmarks came in one of the Hero Arts kits from earlier this year, the one with the, um, the kids that are reading, and that's another kit that I ended up not being able to use yet. But I thought, oh, I'll make a bookmark because I had some pieces left over. I did the fussy cutting around my die cut love again because I really liked the way that that looked on my shaker. These white pieces of course were the ones that were left over from this card so they needed used. My sentiment here I tried this a couple of different ways and what I ended up doing was stamping it with a black embossing ink and then I embossed it with a red glitter embossing powder. When I had done it with clear, it the coverage just wasn't very good. So I decided to do it with black and then over that a couple of times I stamped it again using Versamark clear embossing ink and then again with the glitter, which I like this because it doesn't rub off. Um, but it was a little bit of a pain. So usually when I do embossing, I do um, just clear embossing over black ink or sometimes a white embossing powder. But I've got all of these beautiful embossing powders that I need to start using more. So that's that. There's a couple of strips that were left over from my white glitter paper and I got a bonus project. If you didn't notice, I didn't end up using my add-on for this month. I did use some of the paper from the grab bag and I really thought I was going to use this, but I just didn't have the time and energy to d open up another set and play with it. So hopefully I'll be using this in a project soon. It's got some really great sentiments in here for some nice simple cards. I have some ideas for pop-ups for these hands. And honestly, the first thing I thought of when I got this set was uh, that these might be zombie hands. And then I saw somebody else had posted about doing that. And I thought, oh, well, it's not just me, but they definitely are going to be zombie hands. I'm coming out of a graveyard for a Halloween card. So I'm excited to use this in the future, but I did not get around to using it this month. I hope that you enjoyed this week's video. I'll be creating more videos with card inspiration in the coming weeks. My goal is always one video a week. Sometimes those videos don't have any cards in them like last week's when I was sharing the Alien products, but man, I can't wait to make some cards with those. And then I, I just ordered some new stuff because everybody's having their releases right now. So the Spellbinder shopping cart, if you haven't seen that die yet, so cool that's on its way um the new hamsters from waffle flower i'm totally obsessed with all of the hamsters from waffle flower but there's some really cute new ones and um hero arts of course just came out with their big release and there is another addition to the lifestyle dies the paper dolls that's halloween costumes Okay, so obviously had to order that too. So I have lots of projects in mind and I can't wait to share them with you here 
if you'd like to see more and you're not subscribed yet, please remember to do so. I really appreciate you spending your time with me and leaving comments. It's so fun to chat with you in this context and I hope that you're all taking care of yourselves because things are a little bit crazy right now. Until next time, go make something beautiful.